Hello, welcome back to Blender Strictly Life Learning. In this episode, I'm going to continue talking about um, SVG and Inkscape. And, but I will focus on um, something that's a little bit more advanced. It's, um, as we already know, the SVG is something um, that can be created using Inkscape. But there are also a lot of um, other tools out there that can create SVG. And the SVG itself, if we open it using like a text editor, uh, it's gonna look something like this. It's like a, just like um, XML. And this is something that can be parsed using Python. And I was thinking maybe if we can see this data, maybe we can have more control over the data. Like, uh, because uh, basically what's going on is that I'm using this uh, ser surface to create a word cloud. And I'm gonna show it to you again. So create um, work cloud, where is it? I think this is the one that I'm using. So I just copy paste a lyric um, of a song, a Love Sick by Nuja Bass, and that's actually a rap song. And I pick the 10 most used words from that lyric and I export it out as SVG and it's looking something like this so simple enough i can uh, i thought i can just import it into blender using file import svg and apparently it doesn't work because blender svg import only works for curves so i'm using inkscape and i'm selecting every text objects and then convert it into a path so object to path. If I'm doing that, when I import it into Blender, each and every word is gonna be a separate character. And I don't like that. I, I want each character to be a single word. So I'm thinking of ways uh, where we can kind of improve it. Um, there are a couple of ways that I could think of. Basically, you could modify Blender um, import for SVG. Look at the source code and then just uh, modify this uh, SVG importer so that it can import uh, like a text object or maybe the text object is gonna be separated into different parts, but still uh, can be combined somehow. And the funny thing about, uh, so this is currently uh, how the SVG looks like inside Inkscape. You can look at the XML, so which is really cool. In the XML, you, you can see the word and the text that's made up uh, all this uh, vector art. So I can change this to different word, for example, and make it. I can just select the text and then change it to a different word. So this is pretty cool, and I can actually select all of this, and then object convert the objects to path, and as you can see here, the each and every text now become like a path and each path have a multiple parts right and it's and each text actually have a certain id for grouping when i look at this um, if i save this sml and then kind of parse it in blender i thought maybe i could check every every word that made up uh, every character that made up the word and then check the length. Based on the length, I can then kind of process it inside SphereChalk so that it generate something. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm using a little bit of Python based on what I know about Python, like uh, about Python and parsing. And I'm basically looking at the SVG XML. And then I'm checking every uh, I'm counting every letter, like every character that made up the words. And then in SphereChalk, I use that to filter out the words frame by frame. So from these 10 words, if I tap the frame between 0 and 9, I can actually kind of uh, bake every letter into a separate word. So if I start from frame zero see it's a, I get this make and I can actually bake this out so bake go to the next frame back next frame bake 
big. So this is actually become an interesting process in itself. So for 10 words, now we have 10 different objects that made up the word. And this is exact, uh, exactly what I want. Even though uh, the, the process that I'm doing is a little bit a little bit strange that all, I have to go through all this, but it's kind of very, very interesting. Um, of course, if you have like um, a Python code to parse the XML properly so that um, when it brought into uh, Blender, it becomes like a, a single word for every um, letters. So that's kind of cool if you can do that. But uh, what I'm doing here is really just, uh, I'm using nodes to help me to parse um, the word, like uh, the letter. So now I actually have what I need. So from all this curve, I think there are like 45 characters to make up the word. I end up with just uh, 10, 10 words, and I can delete all the curve after I've done with it. Uh, what's really happening here with the nodes, first of all, I'm using this, uh, script node in Spreadshop, it's parsing, it's parsing all this. It looks at all this XML and then it's checking how many characters, total characters for each word, like speak have five and things like that. So it's collecting all the length and then so I end up with a, with a sum. Uh, so from 45 letters, I have, um, All this, this is the total word for each letter, like makes, have five characters, things like that. So once I get that data, I'm using this uh, NumPy. Um, I am, I'm basically accumulating um, the total of the, the letters for each one of them. And then, and through this uh, interesting process like zipping and then list item, I'm basically creating like a pair pair of number that's kind of creating the start and stop of each letter. So basically, we have 45 letters for all the characters, right? 45, like M, A, K, E, S. I just write it like this, cause, plus, and then we have 45 of these. And then I'm basically using all this process, I'm cutting, I'm cutting the letter, just like uh, if you're cutting like uh, a vegetables or cutting um, a snakes or you know cutting a candy like snakes candy I'm making sure that each of the letter is what's made up the word so once I've done that here in Spreadshop I'm basically checking all this curve and then getting the data from the curve from from each letters and then combining all of them and then extruding up that's why I end up with a text like this. Um, if I select um, all by types curve, I can hide the curve into different layers. And all I end up with is uh, this guy right here. It's all polygon and it's all a single objects for every word. So yeah, there you go. That's the whole process. It might be a little bit convoluted but it's uh, it's opens up like a, it's very interesting actually if you if you use Python and try to dig um, like a parsing you understand XML and then you can perhaps look at HTML as well and then start doing the parsing of HTML it's like a very interesting process I actually write down the whole documentations like how I managed to get there see here at my GitHub. I'm testing like uh, the possibilities, you know, I'm digging into the SVG XML and then I get the information that's interesting and then I keep digging until, okay, then we can collect all the information and, and use it inside Blender. You know, like in this case, I'm interested with a, with a text string, the font, maybe the size of the font, X, Y position, transformation, rotation, etc. maybe the color. So. Yeah, I think this is really cool. So even though you know, it's slightly convoluted, but well, if you're really into this kind of thing and the fact that you can 
observe um, SVG, which is like a vector artwork as XML, like here with the XML editor inside Inkscape. Um, you can use Python script then, uh, whether you use it in Inkscape or in Blender, and then turn it into something useful like uh, this. You know, this is what you need in the end. And now if I if I go back to the word cloud and then I generate a new word cloud, it's gonna work. It's gonna work for me, uh, no problem. I just need to bake it, do, to go through all the process and then it's gonna be simpler because I already have the process here. So there you go, that's um, how I might do like a conversion from this word cloud into this uh, 3D artwork in Blender. Um, yeah, hopefully you find this enjoyable, like uh, useful as well. Let me know what you think. If you have any feedback, suggestion. Uh, thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Bye.